hello students here i am again with the topic bird migration and navigation uh, previously i have delivered two lectures and this is my third lecture on this topic uh, for previous two lectures uh, were about the uh, types of migration and uh, i had also explained the migratory status of the birds and now uh, i will proceed with the duration and distance about the duration and distance in uh, with relevance to migration now the birds may travel from 500 km to 17000 km either at a stretch or by making stopovers depending upon the distance taking a uh, few hours to days to months there is much variation in the distance covered during migration and uh, there is a table given uh, in the in the next lecture you will uh, have a look on that in the in that table uh, so you may you may come to know about the distance covered during migration the birds which cover short distances example vesper sparrow a uh, bluebird and woodcock migrate from southern canada to north america covering only few hundred kilometers on the other hand several hundreds of kilometers may be covered by other birds at a stretch about 100 species of long distance migrants are known in north america the night hawk and barn swallow have the longest migration routes they cover a distance of about 11200 kilometers some birds such as snipes sandpipers travel a distance of more than 12800 kilometers the longest and the most remarkable of all migrations is that of arctic tern its breeding range is circumpolar the distance covered is 17600 km the black headed bunting travels about 6500 km from south eastern europe to bharatpur with a speed of 40 to 48 km per hour majority of the birds migrate at night usually these are small birds they rest and forage during daytime waterfowl and shorebirds also fly at night hours black pole warbler make non stop overwater flights for more than 3680 km lasting about 86 hours The golden plover flies non-stop from Alaska to South America covering 4000 kilometers. Greater shearwater fly across 12800 kilometers from North Atlantic to South Atlantic. Blue geese fly 2720 kilometers in 60 hours. Most migratory birds can fly about 800 kilometers non-stop. the next feature is the altitude uh, now in this we will discuss the uh, major role of altitude during migration formerly it was thought that birds while migrating uh, traveled very high and with a very fast speed timothy c william noted the altitude attained by migratory birds from his ship However, recent knowledge obtained by telescope, radar and radio telemetry has pointed out a great variety. Some birds fly at sea level, some fly very close to the height of Mount Everest. Most birds fly less than 7400 feet above sea level. In the Himalayas, migratory migrants fly between 800 to 1600 feet. and night migrants fly still lower strong flyers such as ducks and geese fly 4800 feet to 8640 feet above sea level in the himalaya migratory birds have been found at a height of 17280 feet similarly black pole warbler godwits and sandpipers fly at 21000 to 20,000, 21,000, and 13,000 feet respectively. Black pole can fly where it is very cold. 
and at oxygen starved altitude of 21000 feet himalayan expeditions found griffon vultures and lemurgier at 22400 feet and himalayan geese at an unbelievable height of 29500 feet The next feature is the velocity. The speeds of the migratory birds range from 32 to 64 km per hour. In small songbirds, while in larger birds such as ducks, geese, the speed is from 64 to 96 km per hour. The velocity of flight is maintained in long flights. Speed can be more if birds meet enemies. The following is the table, table given by Colonel Manchardian of Royal Air Force. Uh, in this table you can see that the smaller perching birds uh, the speed is 20 to 37 miles per hour. Crows have a speed of 31 to 45 miles per hour. Falcons have a speed of 40 to 48 miles per hour and ducks have a speed of 44 to 59 miles per hour. After these features, let us see what are the causes of migration. Some species migrate in directions other than north, south, other than from north to south. Uh, some species migrate irrespective of day length as in tropical lands. Some species migrate when the temperature is mild and the food supply ample and others when the opposite conditions are true. Some species migrate as a result of seasonal alteration in rainfall and drought. In certain species some populations migrate while others do not. In some populations, some individuals migrate while others do not. Some individuals migrate in some years but not in others. The only conclusion one can safely reach after considering the above peculiarities is that there is no one cause for migration and that, and that there must be different causes. The number of authorities have sought causes of migration. Three of them are following. Bird migration, at least in the northern hemisphere, was initiated by the effects of Ice Age. Prior to the coming of the great glaciers to the polar regions, birds lived the year round in the northern hemisphere. Though forced to retreat with the advance of the glaciers, they continued to return to nest in the summer because of an innate attachment of their to their homeland. Uh, for now, this will be enough and I will continue this lecture with the uh, causes of migration types the types of the causes of migration which are uh, studied by many scientists and explained thereafter so i will continue this in the next lecture thank you